So, uh, what mistake does Lane make in Green Circle? Is it supposed to be like 4 minus a negative 3, which would make it 4 plus 3, or? What does everybody think? Mm -hmm. No? Yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mistake I see all the time. Um, if this were said like a negative 4 minus 3, that doesn't really get mixed up too often. But when you're supposed, supposed to subtract something that something you're supposed to subtract winds up being, or, or it happens to be negative, uh, that negative that 3 has a lot of times gets uh, dropped. Um, so Give Lane any advice that would help him to not make that mistake in the future? Really? Any ideas to help him not make not make this mistake in the future? Doesn't have to be amazing advice, just something like parentheses. Make sure to put parentheses. Uh, parentheses is good. especially when you subtract the negatives that you don't drop the negatives that you're supposed to have. There is Lila, who found this rate of change correctly. Right, so uh, she's taking 1275 minus 6, got 675 over 7 minus 4. Okay, that should be fine. Right? This could be, uh, what, uh, x, one and y one, x two and y two. And assume that the rate of change is constant throughout the whole thing. So y two minus y one over x two minus x one should give us the same slope as if we used this as the other point, or if we use these as the two points, or whatever we chose to do. The thing that you might not have uh, grabbed onto was. Why, like, how does Lila know that she's supposed to have days down here in dollars in the numerator? You can go back and look at the instructions, find the rate of change of cost with respect to time. So, how does she know that she's supposed to have dollars in the numerator and days in the denominator? Tildy? Um, well, rate change of cost would be Rate should be on the top? Well, I'm really confused. I, I, well, I kind of get it. Um, not really, never mind. Okay. Um, do you understand the question? No. Sure? Um, maybe because it says cost two times. Maybe that just. Yeah. Uh, cost with respect to time. And when we say with respect to, okay, in, a, in a rate of change, when you look at the denominator, a lot of times it's hours, or maybe it's minutes, or maybe it's days, or seconds, or whatever this, this thing, usually time, maybe something else sometimes, but a lot of times it's a measure of time, seconds, days, hours, minutes, 
weeks, years. It's this independent thing. Time is going to go by uh, pretty much at a constant almost no matter what you do. Okay? You can consider it to be a constant if we're all on Earth uh, in the same reference frame, then it's a constant. So this time in the denominator usually is this independent thing. It's going to go along. It's going to change. And then we look at what happens to the numerator. How is the, this number in the numerator changing with respect to the thing in the denominator? So uh, this thing first and two, the second thing, that's a good indication that it's numerator to denominator. We see with respect to, we could consider with respect to to mean that would be in the denominator. We're comparing the cost to the time. With respect to, answers that question. With respect to tells us that that thing that's with respect to is in the denominator. Okay. So it is 675 divided by 3, got 225. What's the meaning of that 225? What are the units of it? What, what does it mean in the context of the question? It goes up what, in, like, in like the dollar form, it goes up like 225 every day. So it goes up to 25 per day. Now, it goes up 675 for three days, it goes up 225 uh, every one day. We could just call it uh, Renting a video, it costs two twenty-five a day to rent this video. Um, do you have any questions from the homework, Hunter? So far, that's all it said. Negative 1, 8 is on the line that has a slope of negative 3. Is the point 4, negative 7 on the same line? So if we were to keep going this direction, would we go through 4, negative 7? Let's try and use this thing that we just learned, where we're just reminded of. So we could use that. That would be great. Is four negative seven on this line that is somewhere on top of the line? Okay. Going down until you got to an x of four. Yeah. What the what? Why did you get? Okay. Okay. Well, let's just follow it down. Uh, we go down three and over one. Where would that put us here? What would be the coordinates at that point? Zero. Zero five. Okay. 
go down three, one, two, three again, and over one, where does that put us? One, two, one, two. We'll go down three again, and over one, where's that? Two, negative uh, one. Down three, and over one, where does that put us? Over two, and then negative four. Negative four, down three, and over one. Is that four negative seven? Yeah. That's turned out to be four negative seven. Okay. How can we use, so that's, that's one way we've, we've shown you, yeah. But uh, without telling someone they need to draw a picture and then go down and over, could we use this y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and then say, voila, there you go. It must be, must be on that line. watch me do these things and might as well you just sit over there and do your homework by yourself. It's gonna do about that much good. Yes, can um, number thirty seven. No, we're still here. Oh well I thought we were done. How can we use this y two minus y one over x two minus x one? Somehow the information that's given to us and then use that as evidence to say, yeah that point four negative seven must be on that line that you're talking about. There? Subtract the first point and then the last point. And see if you get the slope. This point and that point? Yeah. And if if it, if this is on the same line, then what'll happen? You get negative three. Should you should get negative three. Yeah. Right? If you got something else, what would that mean? Yeah. Uh, okay, well since we know the four negative seven is on the line, then you must have done it wrong. And if you didn't know that, what if you subtracted those two, you found the slope between two points and it didn't have that slope of negative three? slope between any two points on the same line needs to have a consistent slope. Whether I pick this point and this point, or this point and some point way down here, should still come out with the same ratio. So the slope between these two points, do y2, negative 7, minus y1, that's 8, over uh, two. And then uh, 4 minus negative one, so negative 15 over four plus one is five, and that's negative three. So the slope between negative one, eight, and four, negative seven, is negative three, and negative one, eight was on its, a line that they said had a slope of negative three, so it must be on that line, because they have the same slope. 37, Cameron? Yeah.
So firing, because firing in kiln takes place at different temperatures for different amounts of time. The graph shows the temperature in the kiln while firing a piece of pottery uh, after we preheat the kiln. So preheated means that we don't start even until the temperature is at 250. Determine the time interval during which the temperature kiln uh, show the greatest rate of change. So by reading this graph, at what, during what time interval was the temperature, the rate of change the highest? Yeah. Um, between when you began and an hour and a half. Very good. Now what about that part of the graph tells us that we have the greatest rate of change? So no. steeper incline. Steeper incline, right? Steeper uh, incline. Okay. And a way to say that with mathy words is bigger slope. Okay. The vertical to horizontal ratio, the rise to the run, is big compared to something like this. Rise to run is very small because we're taking this small vertical and dividing by this big horizontal, which will give us a, a relatively small number, relatively small to this compared to this uh, slope. Okay. Determine the time interval during which the temperature in the kiln showed the least rate of change. When is it changing the least? Definitely. Between 4.625 hours and 8.95. Okay. Because that incline is as low a steepness as possible, it's a small slope. A slope is a number, it's a number that compares the vertical to the horizontal. It's a ratio of the rise to the run. Okay? And if that number is big, if that rise to run is big, we're having a big rate of change. And if it's small, we're having a, a small rate of change or a slow rate of change. Good question? We're going to do a little exercise here to, you know, after we get done with the homework. We're going to hopefully solidify this idea a little bit more. Slope and rate of change are the same thing. Slope and the rate of change. The slope of the graph and the rate of change are the same thing. Um, any other questions? If you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. And if you don't, let me know by passing your homework. Okay. So these containers are going to hold some uh, liquid, some water. And uh, however they're being added, it's, it's being added at a constant rate. I think it's maybe a gallon a minute or something like that. So what I want you to do is create a graph for each of them, but we'll do them one at a time. Do one and then we'll talk about it. And the graph's going to look like this. measurements at time one, here's the height at time two, here's the height at time three, here's the height. What kind of a shape does this graph have? What does it look like?
Okay, so let's say that uh, that's the height of the water after one second. So can somebody come and draw what the height would be after two seconds. Someone show us where we're getting three seconds. How are we deciding, you know, after I've said how high it would be after one second, how are we deciding how high it would be really? Well, after each second, it goes up the same amount it did in one second. How do we know it goes up the same amount? Yeah. Because it really didn't change the, how, the, how, the, how it's shaped. Yeah, it's shaped just straight up that cylinder. And so if you are putting in the same amount per second or whatever, a constant flow of water is coming through, then the height should change at a constant rate. So after one second, let's say it's height whatever, and then we'll, we'll just take that much and you know the height is gonna raise, it's gonna increase at a steady, steady rate, steady rate of change. Okay, so nice, steady, constant slope. The slope is the same for the whole graph because the height is changing at a constant rate. Now you might think that's a fast rate of change, maybe the height you think it's, it's changing quickly, maybe you think it's changing slowly, whatever it is, it's changing the same the whole time. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing for this one. Hopefully we've, we've talked about this one in, in detail so you understand better exactly what we're looking for. It might help to do something like this to decide, you know, is, are we getting a lot of height increase over this time interval or not as much you know, compared to other times. We got the height here, the time, and again, I just want you to draw that graph. Bob, it won't be a straight line, so what will it look like? That's up to you to decide. Okay, so let's say that this took one second. At two seconds, what would you say? Really? It'd be, um, when it'd be like, it'd be like a little bit higher than it is, like, the same amount, but a little tiny bit higher. So that, well, we saw an increase from zero height to this height. So we should see an increase from this height to like double this, but a little more. Yeah. Right? Kind of like this was double the height in two seconds. This will be even a little bit higher than that. Why? Because it gets skinnier. It gets skinnier, and now this constant, this steady flow of water, uh, it, it needs to go somewhere, right? And it has less room horizontally, so it's got to go more vertically, the height's got to increase. Okay, so uh, in the next seconds, this is not a good color, just, okay. In the next second, second number two, you're gonna see that height increase 
A little more, what after, about after three seconds. And it's gonna increase even more than it did the previous two times. It's not gonna go up just this little bit here or even this amount, but even more than this. So maybe that high. Okay. So the height is, is increasing. What? What word would you use? Greater. Greater. It's increasing greater as time goes on. Yeah. Okay. And maybe after, uh, what is this going to be, four seconds, maybe it increases all the way up to mm -hmm. the, the neck of this uh, container. And after that, what can we expect the height to do? Full. 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 Huh? All the way to the top. Well, yeah, it's going to increase to the top, but let's say that in the next uh, second it goes this far. In the next second, where's it going to be? Full. Full. Be right about full, right? Because once it gets to here, once it gets to the neck, what kind of a shape does the neck have? Oh. So it's going to go up an even. A, a, a square cylinder, right? Or a right cylinder, like this. It's a cylinder like this, so the height should increase the same amount for every time interval. Okay? Um, yeah. So, uh, for the first, say, second, it's not going to increase, the height's not going to increase very much. For the next second, it'll increase uh, more, and for the next second, it'll increase more and more and more, right? Until it gets to the, the neck of the container, and then it'll just stay the same, right? Mm -hmm. So this right here, what's the shape of that part of the graph? Um, what? Um, oh, it's the shape of the graph, not the shape of the container. What's the shape of the graph at that point? Straight. It's a straight line. Mm -hmm. And so this is straight. It's a constant increase in height. Every time that goes by, every second or every half second or whatever, we see the same increase, a steady slope, right? What about here, what kind of a shape does this part have? Curve. That curve, we can't really get more specific than curve, but it's got some kind of a curve to it. So it's curved just constantly. The rate at which the height is increasing is changing just all the time. From one moment to the next, it's different. It's faster, it's faster, and faster until it gets to the neck, and then it just changes at a constant rate. Okay. So how fast is the height changing here in relative terms? Not very much. Not very much. Pretty slowly, right? Slow. What about the graph tells us that the height is changing slowly? What about the grid, the graph, the shape of the graph tells us that it's changing slowly? It doesn't go up very high. Doesn't go up very high for you know this time interval. What do we call that? Going up to going over. Is that word? Rise over run. Rise over run. There's one word. So whatever the rise over run is what? The slope, right? Slope is small, therefore the rate of change is slow. Okay, but over here, it's fast, right? It's changing quickly. And what about the slope that we notice? Bigger. Big, big slope, fast rate of change. Small slope, slow rate of change. Okay. The last one, a little tricky. Height, time, Let's see what you can come up with. Let's start again by after one second, it's the height has changed this much. So after a second more. How will it change over that next second? Yeah? You're probably going the same, but a little bit less. The same, but a little bit less. Okay, so we see it increase this much. 
from zero to one second, and from zero, or from one second to two seconds, probably change not as much. And what about the next second? Even less than before, so like that, and after that, a little bit less, a little bit less. less. And now what? After after it gets past here, it'll start to increase more and more and more and more and even more. Yeah. Well, kind of hard to let's just take this all the way. It gets really skinny. It's going to come up really fast, right? That height's going to change really fast. And then what? Slower. Okay, slow. So not as much as this. So, so less than that. And it's getting wider, so it'll change even more slowly. It's getting wider still, even more slowly. <coughs> so you can see big ch change in height, little tiny changes in height as we get to a wider part of the container, and really fast as it gets narrow. Okay. So from here to here, it's going to change some, and then it's going to change less, and it's going to change less, and it's going to change less. Okay. And say, right about here, it starts to increase, right? It starts to, the height starts to increase more and more and more as we go through here. So it's changing really quickly, and then it starts to change slowly again. Okay. So quickly. More slowly, has to speed up quite a bit as it gets toward this uh, very skinny part of the neck, and then it slows back down as the container widens back out. Where do you think the height is changing the slowest? In the middle. What do you mean by the middle? Uh, yeah, right here on the on the base. Uh, at what part of the base do you think the height is changing the slowest? So where it's at its widest. Yeah. Okay. So right there, would we say that that's where like that's the point where the, the base is at its widest? Why? Why are we saying that that's where it's the widest? It's, uh, it's closer to horizontal, right? Uh -huh. this, uh, this slope is small. A small slope is one that's close to being a zero slope, a horizontal line. Okay, so slowest, which means that, do you think it's, it's not changing as slowly here? Probably not, why not? Why isn't it changing as slowly here? Because it's, it's not as wide. This is wider, there's more space horizontally for all that water to go somewhere when it's wider. So it's wide, but it's not as wide here, so we should see a slope that's not as close to horizontal, not as close to being flat. Okay. And where is it probably increasing the quickest? The skinny There, we can see the bottom is pretty skinny. It's not as skinny as this neck part right here, so fastest right here. Fastest, slowest. By looking at the graph, we can tell those things by the slope. The slope tells us how fast this thing is changing. Okay. So, and that's I, this is the between the slope and the rate of change. There's this really strong link between slope and rate of change. In fact, the slope of the line or the graph, whatever at that point, is the rate of change of whatever, the height to the time or the, your distance to time or whatever it is. So if we compare the vertical to the horizontal, we're looking at the slope. And the bigger the slope, the bigger the rate of change, the faster the rate of change. The, the uh, flatter the slope, the slower the rate of change. <coughs> okay. I want to try to look at the next section 4.6 uh, with a clip from a movie that I like a lot. Uh, 
Uh, it's called October Sky. Has anybody seen October Sky? Okay, well, it's a very good movie. Um, I recommend it. So we're going to look at a, a quick little clip, and we're just going to yeah, really, doesn't really tell you anything about the movie, but it is from the movie. I like the movie, and it had an example of what we're talking about today, so I thought it would be Um, make sure the sound is all ready to go. Okay, so the the question we're trying to answer here is, uh, well, hold on just a second.